GitLab attempted to make and then promptly reverted one of the worst management decisions I've seen in quite a while. And if you've seen this channel before, you would know that I've covered quite a lot of these. So this was initially reported on by the Register after they obtained some internal documentation from GitLab. This internal document was a meeting agenda planned for August 9th. And what they were planning to discuss in that meeting was something known as the data retention policy for free users. After 2022-09-2022, which is September 22nd, we'll be rolling out the data retention policy for free users. This sub-program will impose limits on the number of months a free project can remain inactive before we automatically delete it and data therein. The number of months was going to be 12, as in you have one year. So if a project is inactive for one year, they would automatically delete it. Now, obviously, this doesn't affect anything that's being self-hosted or anything like that, but most people are going to be on the main GitLab instance. And supposedly, this would save them up to a million dollars a year and help make its SaaS business actually sustainable. Now, let's just take that million dollars a year at face value. That's not a lot of money. Now, that's a lot of money for like you and I, but it's not a lot of money for GitLab. So they actually publish how much revenue they make. And in the 2022 financial year, they made 252.7 million. One million dollars is um not much money compared to that. If they wanted to save money, which is totally fine, they're a business, it's their right to go and do so, there are probably better places to save that money that wouldn't be such a PR nightmare. And considering how quickly they turned this around, it doesn't seem like it was such a um, business-critical decision. Now, the Register didn't fully release this meeting agenda, so I can totally understand why you wouldn't trust them and think they might be making stuff up. But you don't need to trust them, because GitLab was doing this entirely in the public. It's just that nobody noticed. So there was this feature being added three months ago. Add feature to delete inactive projects. This has been merged into the project. So what does this MR do and why? Add inactive project deletion feature. Add a cron job that runs daily, finds the inactive projects, and perform the following action. Send deletion warning email to the inactive project maintainer and owners. Store the date when the email was sent in a hash. If we've sent an email, then it checks whether the project is still inactive for a duration greater than inactive projects delete after months, defined in the application settings table. In case the project is still inactive, it permanently deletes the project. When an activity is performed on an inactive project, after the deletion warning email was sent, we remove that project's key from the hash. And this is what the email would actually look like. Hi, this person. Due to inactivity, the test Android template project is scheduled to be deleted on this date. To unschedule the deletion of the project, perform some activity on it. For example, create or close an issue, create or update a merge request, things like that. Basically, do some activity. I don't dislike this feature actually existing. If a maintainer of a GitLab instance wants to go and do this, I think it's great that it's an option. It shouldn't be enabled on the main instance though. Enabling it would be a disaster for free tier users, which I imagine is most of the people on GitLab. So there are some projects out there which are inactive simply because they are done. No changes need to be made. Everything is complete. So why would you make a change? Take say BSPWM. Its last update was six months ago. At least for the code, there's like some slight documentation changes, but any major change, six months ago. And that's because there was like a tiny bug. But feature-wise, development's not being done anymore. And this is probably going to be the end of any work really being done. It's a functionally complete project, so why change it? Or how about if you use GitLab as a host for your portfolio? So you write a bunch of things because you want to get a job as a developer. You complete them, and then you never update them again. And unlike, say, BSPWM, where people might be trying to update it themselves, in this case, nobody cares about your portfolio, and it's just going to sit there doing basically nothing. And then you go back to GitLab a year later when, you know, you're trying to find some new work, and everything is gone. Also, if a project is a dependency, 
it probably shouldn't be deleted. Take, for example, the whole left pad situation, where left pad was basically at the root of a lot of projects, it disappeared, and it effectively broke NPM. Now, GitLab probably has every right to delete data if you're not paying for it to be hosted. If you want to keep it online, you gotta pay for it. But it doesn't stop people being rightfully angry when something they had been using all of this time was going to be taken away from them. But I don't know if it's a good position that we're in that we expect these companies to just keep hosting things for free basically forever. But I really don't know of a better solution because if you're a, you know, a young developer, you're a poor developer, having an entry fee may just be an impossible barrier to overcome, especially considering what the, um, the minimum pricing for GitLab is. I don't know why they do this, but the minimum pro price is $19. Why is it $19? Why is there not like a $5 tier here? This is GitHub's pricing. You have a $4 tier. Now I'm not saying that the cheaper tier needs to provide everything being provided in the more expensive tier. That's not how a tiering structure would work. But why do you not have a cheaper tier that offers some of the features that some people might want? Because going up to $19, is way too much money for what some people would want to spend. As a professional dev or your company is paying for it for you, $19 a month per user is not that much money. But if you're a young developer and you want some of these features, it might be way too much than you'd ever be willing to spend. But you might be willing to spend $4 a month, for example. Now this story kind of instantly blew up, leading to GitLab responding very quickly, they said this on Twitter. They didn't make any mention of the register whatsoever, but they'd also never mentioned deleting repositories in the first place. So everybody knew what it was about. So we discussed internally what to do with inactive repositories. We reached a decision to move unused repos to object storage. Once implemented, they will still be accessible but will take a bit longer to access after a long period of inactivity. But this opened up a whole bunch of other questions, so luckily the GitLab CEO, Sid C. Brandy, was basically on damage control to answer those questions. So the first thing that was asked was, wait, does inactive mean repositories that have no new commits, or only those without new commits and without read access by cloning slash fetching? We're not sure yet. Probably all write operations would keep a project active, creating an issue, a merge request, pushing changes to a branch, etc. We might also keep it active as long as people are doing read operations such as cloning and forking. So not if you were just like browsing the repo, but if it was a library, for example, like a Python library, or it was a window manager or anything else like that, if people were cloning it at a relative rate, it would still be considered active. And also, will the archived code still be visible to the public, or will only the repository owner be able to recover it from the archived object storage? Archived projects is a user-activated state that signals intent. We're not sure yet, but very likely the storage type used is orthogonal to that. Our current plan for object storage would keep the repos visible to everyone. So right now, there would be two ways for a project to go inactive. Firstly, no actions are taken on that repo that would be considered a write action. So making an issue, making a pull request, uploading code, things like that. All of those would be write operations and maybe certain read operations like cloning and forking, those would be considered activity as well. Also, if a user actively puts the repository into the archive state, then it will be put into this inactive state. And they didn't make it clear what they actually mean by object storage. But judging by what is being said, we can pretty much assume that it means an archival state where the data is not going to be as easily accessible. Maybe it won't be indexed in the GitLab search. It might still show up on Google, but if you do go to the page, 
it's probably going to take a lot longer than you would normally expect for it to actually load because it needs to go and pull it from this archive storage that is presumably cheaper to operate. And you know what? I'm totally fine with this solution. It keeps the code online. So if anyone does want to go back to it and actually see it, whether it's like a portfolio or just a project that's completed that maybe not many people are using, but someone might come along that thinks it's really cool. Like I've seen really cool projects that hadn't been updated on GitHub for like five years, but they still work perfectly because nothing in them broke. So why would they change? So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I know this story happened a couple of days ago, but I wanted to make sure that everybody was sort of up to date on what was actually going on. Because I know a lot of people may have only seen the original story and not saw the follow-up to it, or saw the follow-up and not the original, and had no idea what was really going on. So hopefully this has all cleared that up. So if you like this video, I'm going to go like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Rivera Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.